and we are so back stripe show podcast i'm your host travis fulton thank you for making us part of your day hope uh, you guys are off to a great start uh, this week we are in full flight football season having a blast with that here of course in the south living in florida college football is uh yeah it's a pretty big deal down here you know sec and uh, it's been fun to uh Get together, watch some college football, NFL back on Sunday. My Seahawks get a win. 1-0, excited, new era, young coach, Mike McDonald. It's been fun to see the young coaches in the NFL, and I guess in you know college as well, but in particularly the NFL, when you, when you look at Mike McDonald now, who, you know, I think he's like 36 years of age, uh, Sean McVay, you know, not much older, Mike Shanahan. I mean, these guys are are young guys. And it, it's cool to see them come in and have the impact on the game that they're having. I bring that up because, you know, so much of that is happening in golf too. You 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 see the next generation of of coaches coming along and and the impact that they're having at the game. So it, it's it, it's cool to see how the game evolves. Um and the next generation comes in and has its impact and and kind of moves the game along to some degree, which is whether it's, you know, from the offense perspective or the defensive perspective, you know, in golf, I, I think a lot of it is from the science perspective, um, the specialization of the sport. Um, you've got guys now in golf that just focus on the full swing. Uh, you got guys that focus just on the short game. You got guys that focus just on putting. Uh, the mental aspect, fitness, nutrition. I mean, you name it, the specialization is really something. And you can see it in football too. You know, now it's not just the offensive coordinator. It's the assistant offensive coordinator. Um, it's it's the run game coach, the passing game coach. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> it really is uh, amazing to see how sports just continues to move along. So young people doing well. That's a that's an exciting thing. And, and today instruction as it pertains to the driver that's the the focus of today's podcast it's a it's an instruction thursday and that's what we do we took last week off of course because we needed a breather uh the pga tour there was no events fire back up this week starting it off here in the fall series but we took a week off from from the instruction side as well and now we come back and we start to look ahead to the fall and of course, the fall is a great time to play golf. Uh, I cannot wait. I can tell you that for certain here for the fall because it's been hot and it's been wet, humid. And so I'm looking forward to when I wake up and it's hmm, 67 degrees, crisp air, gets up to about 80, and we can go out and play golf and not sweat. Right now, a lot of you in the north, you're, you're probably starting to sense that a little bit. And I'm actually um, heading to the Greenbrier, which I'm excited about because I haven't never been to West Virginia. And I've always wanted to go to the Greenbrier. I'm going to go to the Greenbrier and play a little bit of golf, which is going to be fun. And I was looking at the weather, and it's like a high of 72. And so, yeah, fall, put a jacket on, off we go. So we still got some time here. Everywhere in the United States, we got some time to, to play good golf. Now, about, let's see, probably six weeks ago, maybe somewhere in there, not quite, I did a podcast on one of my training programs that you can find on travisholtongolf.com. And I did it around Operation Baby Draw. And I'm not going to get into all the details of what I discussed there. You can go back and you can watch and you can listen to that. But it got it, it, uh, it, I think it hit home with a lot of people and I got a lot of feedback on it. And a lot of you went out and you bought the training program on the website, which I appreciate. And it's laid out in 10 videos. And you can follow along. And, you know, that that program is the number one program because I think it applies to so many amateur golfers learning draw components, how that elevates their ceiling, how that then allows them to elevate their skill set, not only hit their irons better, but also into the driver. And so I got to thinking about, all right, well, maybe we should do another one. What's the second most popular training program on my website? It's not Operation Drip Fade, although you should check that out for those that overhook it and want to hit a power fade, not a wipe fade. The second is total driving. And total driving 
of course, is popular because it is specific to the driver. How do I hit my driver longer? How do I hit my driver more consistent? How do I hit my driver and hit more fairways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so today we're going to spend some time on total driving, which is the second most popular training program on my website, travisholtongolf.com, 10 videos in order. So let's get into that. The first video with the driver, and I'm going to bring in Joaquin Neiman. Got a lot of videos, of course. We look at a lot of swings for those that are watching on YouTube. But when you look at the driver setup, okay, I think the driver setup is one of the most difficult clubs to set up to. And the reason is because the ball's so far forward of center. Now, most of the time when you when you talk about ball position, the conversation is around the feet, right? Play it up towards the, to the front heel. For right-handed player, it'd be the left heel. Yeah, I like to talk about ball position relative to kind of the left shoulder. And I like the ball to be, you know, somewhere in the middle of that left shoulder. Okay. The lowest point of the arc should be, you know, for all intents and purposes, somewhere in the middle to outside portion of that lead shoulder. And so if we're going to tee it up high and we want to hit it level and we want to hit more up on it, then we've got to play it up towards the low point or beyond, right? Now, a lot of your attack angles and things like that can factor into how far you're going to play the, fall, the ball forward and, and how high you're going to tee it. But I think generally speaking, playing the ball, you know, front shoulder um, and the ball being teed up about a half a ball above the driver head is, is a good spot. Now, when the ball's forward, there's two things you have to be careful with. And I, and I talk about this all of the time, okay? Not just in my training program, but in my studio here. I talk about this all the time. Number one, don't lean the handle forward, okay? Do not lean the handle forward. See the hands there? The hands are in line with the driver head or if anything, slightly behind, okay? Number two, don't face the forward ball position. Imagine the ball, you know, up towards that left shoulder, left heel. It's really easy with the ball so far forward to turn your entire torso, your chest, and look up to it. When you do that, you're going to lose some tilt and you're going to aim left. And you see this a lot. You'll see a lot of times if you look down the target line with your buddies, you'll see their feet aiming more right and their shoulders aiming more left. That's because they're facing the forward ball position. So what you want to do is you want to take your spine, tilt it slightly away from the target. But I think for so often, for so many, you've got to turn your chest and look more to the right of the ball. Okay, it feels like you're looking more to the right. For so many, they need to feel closed. Not all, but for many. I see more people coming in here, playing the ball. Yes, playing the ball forward, but in facing that forward ball position, and they're too open to the left. And so what I do is I get them in here, get the ball forward, get the hands in line or slightly behind, tilt the spine and turn their chest a little to the right. And when they look out there, they feel a little closed. Okay. Now, if you're closed, if you are indeed closed and you're too closed and you hit too many blocks and hooks, well, that you probably do need to open up everything more. But I don't find that to be the predominant issue. Now, the other thing I like is I do like to add a little more weight to the right foot. I think it's okay to feel like 60% on your right. And there's your setup. You're set up more behind the ball with the driver than you are a sevener. Not only is the ball position more forward, but you 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 maintain that tilt in the spine to the right. You keep yourself disciplined in, in turning your chest a little to the right, staying more square behind it, not looking up to it, add a little weight to the right foot, hands slightly back behind the driver head. Everything's more behind it, okay? And, and that's where we need to be. If I can get people to set up like this, if I can get people to set up like this, I, I really – feel like we've got a good chance from here. Okay. It doesn't guarantee anything, but my goodness, it helps so many at address. So that's, you know, a little bit about the, the driver setup. I'm going to bring in Sam Byrne. Guy that home is an absolute force. And you can see here, whoops, you can see here. And 
at address. Let me take a look at Sam. There he is, right? A little different camera angle, but you can see the ball forward. And you can see his, look at his head. Look at the, look at the tip of his cap. His cap is almost, it's like turned a little to the right. I like that. See the cap there? If I drew a line from the center of the cap, it's, it's pointing way behind the ball. I see a lot of amateurs the other way. If you're like most golfers, you blame yourself when you miss a short putt. So after you hold back the urge to throw your putter in the lake, don't do that. You try to fix your putting stroke. But how long does that last? One week, one round, one hole? There's a company called Lab Golf that doesn't think you should be blaming yourself. That's because all putters have this thing called torque, which means the putter face is trying to twist during the stroke. So you grip it like a snake. What Lab Golf did is they figure out how to make putters with no torque. They call it lie angle balance. And you have to feel it to believe it. I did. The Lab Golf putter, you don't have to use a funny putting grip to try to keep the face square. You can putt it any way you want because Lab Golf putter stays perfectly square by itself. It's effortless. To see how much easier putting can be, head over to labgolf.com. From there, I want to talk about making a nice loaded turn. We're going to go back to our friend here in Joaquin. Now, when you look at Joaquin Neiman, you look at this to the top of the swing. The first thing that I like is, is I like that the belt buckle is kind of tracing towards the right heel. Okay? I like the idea of a little trace in the belt buckle moving a bit lateral, kind of towards the right heel. And then as that's tracing a little bit, then you start to turn and that right hip is working back behind him. And as the right hip turns and works back behind him, the left shoulder is well behind the ball. Now, I don't expect you to turn this much. But for the eyes and for an example, you can clearly see that he has loaded up into the right side and his left shoulder has turned well behind the golf ball. And we're going to do that again. So I'm going to play it back to the beginning. Watch his belt buckle early. It's an early trace, right? He's kind of moving a little momentum into the right side. And as it moves into the right side, that right hip is drawing up and back, and that left shoulder is fully back behind the ball. Let's bring in Sammy Burns. Same thing to the top. You can see the belt buckle moving towards the right, his right hip really drawing back behind him. Look at the left knee. Left knee's pointing behind the ball. So often, I find myself talking to amateurs to get the left knee to point more behind the ball. And when the left knee points more behind the ball, it tends to move more weight into the right side, it tends to encourage the right hip to turn up and back. If you follow my instruction, you th this is some of the language that I use, the trail hip working up and back, up and back. Let the right hip turn. Let you lose a little flexion in the right knee. Let the left knee add flexion and point behind the ball. If you start getting this kind of lower body activity, the upper body tends to turn better. The left shoulder tends to get back behind the ball. And you can see it in spades right there. Now, the other thing that when you turn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in Xander Schauffele. This is something that I think Xander has actually um, has gotten a little deeper in his turn. Uh, now, the most notable you'll see with the club shaft at the top, which I'm going to transition to the club here in a minute. And, and Xander's someone who tends to get the club a little short and laid off at the top. You can see on the left there, and, and he works to get the club more down the line. For a driver, I think this is a really good image. I am not a huge fan of the club kind of pointing too left at the top, although that's probably manageable. Like, it's, I wouldn't consider that laid off, per se. But learning to get the club complete to the top, oftentimes more parallel at the top, will encourage that kind of turn that I created. And you can see this little space in between his knees at the top. For those that are listening, if the, if the camera is down the target line and you're to turn to the top, this is a checkpoint that I'll show people. I'll show them, hey, let that little window, that little space open up between the knees. That's telling me that you're getting the right hip to kind of climb up and back. The weight's moving into the trail side the left knee's working more down and across. That change of knee flex and that little window, I think, is a very good thing. And I think in many ways, what I'm talking about with the body is where length and accuracy kind of come together. So I like that little space there 
with Xander. All right, so that's kind of the body. Now, let's talk about the club because the club, the club plays into, I think, so much about what the body is going to do. I, I talk about this a lot, not, not just with the driver, but with just full swing development in general. For those that follow me, they know that I don't, I don't, I do not like to see the club head get in behind the hands early. I just don't. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll look if you're, um, if you're John Rom or you know you're you're a super elite player, you're going to work around it, right? Like there's there's times to work around it. But for the amateur player who plays once a week, once a month, and wants to make this as easy as possible, it's an easy thing to clean up. And here's Lucas Glover. Watch this. I mean, Lucas Glover can drive the golf ball. Look at the club head. It's out in front of him. And the club head is staying a little out in front of the hands. The club head is working a little up, up and out in front of the hands. When I get that, when I get that with a student, I can then convince them to turn the way that I just described. Okay. Hands in, club head a little out in the first move, club heads working up the up the plane line, not too far inside. Now you're incentivizing you to turn and then get it to go around. I think most, I think most amateurs understand that the driver needs to feel more around the body, more merry-go-round, less Ferris wheel. But I think what they do is they suck the club head in too low early low and in and then as they do that it incentivizes them not to turn instead it incentivizes them to take on a body fault and lift the arms to up and down and so when you show them look keep the club head a lot in front of you more up the top side now now we can get it to go around us and we can turn the right hip and we can get that little window that opens up right and you can see it there with lucas check this out here for those that are watching the club head starts out in front of him, then as he gets it up to the top, look at the window. Right hip, turning up and back. He's losing flexion in his right knee. Look at the window between his knees there. Such a good checkpoint. Such a good thing. And as he turns, now the lead arm can round out. The lead arm can get depth. It can work around you. Okay. Left arm covering the right shoulder. I kind of like that for most. Oftentimes, you know, for those that are really steep with the left arm, really up and down, I'll, I'll get them to watch in the in the mirror and feel like the left arm's under the right shoulder. The left arm, yes, it's more round. It's flatter. Everything's working more round, deeper. But it doesn't mean you suck the club head inside early, okay? Hopefully, I'm making that point. Because... I think so much of what I teach with the irons um, and 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 have success with with the irons, when I take them to the driver, man, it's like it's the same thing. It's the same swing. It's a different setup, but it's the same swing. And so this is where you start to get the improvements running through the bag, all every club in your bag, a little bit easier. So there it is, right? The left arm, it's working around the body. It's more marrow go round. We're, we're recruiting from the body properly. Hopefully we have a good grip, neutral grip, maybe slightly strong, get that club face square. Not a big fan of an open face, but the biggest thing here is, look, we're kind of sequencing that backswing. We're recruiting the proper way, getting loaded up, getting things working around. And now we've got a really good chance for this club to swing down on a relatively shallow plane, right? If you're steep, it's tough with the driver. There's no doubt. You know, if you're steep, it's really tough with the driver. And, and you've, gotta, you've got to get the sense with the driver that, yes, it's more around you, but when it comes down, that club head is staying pitched back behind you. The club head is not steepening. It's not getting out in front. The shaft is not vertical. But things are definitely, the club head's more back behind. I mean, look at that. I mean, this is obviously elite. But my goodness, look at the shaft. I mean, it's like it's bisecting the right forearm. I mean, look how low that is. Look how, look how far the club head is behind him. Like, that's good. You know, I, I don't, I've never really understood when, you know, like when, when you hear the conversation of, I, I think it's misleading. I understand it, but it's misleading to amateurs. Like, he's trying to keep the club more in front of him. All right, well, most amateurs should try to get the club more behind him. 
because they got the club too far in front of them. It's too steep. It's out to in. And I think they need to feel like the club head's more behind them. Now, better players, professionals, better ball strikers, they tend to maybe get the club head too far behind them. They get the path working too in to out. That's a different set of circumstances. But for most, it's not the case. Most would kill to have anywhere close to that right there where that club head is really pitched back behind shallow. You can get a lot of that. You can really promote a lot of that by setting up the way that I encourage, by getting you to load up, work in the sequence, kind of out and around to the top of the swing. Got a good grip. Club face is not open. Now you can, you know, you're, you're really incentivizing you now to swing down shallower and more from the inside. And I think for so many, you remember, I was kind of encouraging you to maybe feel a little close to the right. I think for so many in trying to, to, to hit the inside of the ball for the first time, trying to swing a little more along their body line, trying to start the ball a little more out towards right field. So that's a very different feel and position when you start rounding things out. It starts coming down with the club head more behind you. And I think for the first time, when you look at, we go back to Joaquin, where you're, you're behind it, right? Let's leave a example, but let's go back to uh, Sammy Burns. Look at that, behind it. Look at that side bend. Spine tilted to the right. Start behind it, stay behind it. Got to have some side bend. I think majority of amateur golfers, they need some side bend. Professionals will start taking some of it out when they start hanging back, getting the path too much from the inside. I think for amateurs, you know, you got to be behind it. So you, you start checking these boxes off at address and what's happening in the backswing and the club heads behind you. And, and, and all of a sudden now you're like, yeah, man, I'm behind it. Started behind it much more than I'm used to. I'm returning behind it. Side bend to the right. Club head swinging a little from the inside kind of swinging past the chest a little bit. Oftentimes, for those that really lunge out in front, you start getting the sense of, yeah, I'm staying behind it, and the club head's kind of swinging past me. It's swinging past me. It feels like it's swinging a little bit more on the way up. So these are, you know, look, I'm sharing a lot of the conversations that I, I have had over the years with, with, I think, predominantly what my audience is, is that amateur golfer looking to improve things. And it's been kind of interesting going through some of my training programs, talking about a few of the, I think the specifics and, and, and I think the most popular videos around some of the most common mistakes, right? And there's no question what I talked about in the backswing is going to help you. There's no question, you know, learning to kind of pitch the club head back behind you is going to help you. There's no question that staying behind it with the driver is going to help so many. And I think that the last thing that I would say through impact and, and, and through the conversation that I've had is, is for those who, who manage the differentiation between the upper and the lower body exceptionally well. And, and, and so let's go back to Sam here as he loads the top into the right side. Now with that weight moving into the right, it's going to want to shift to the left. So that lower from the top it shifts left. See that right there? So that lower body is moving lateral into the lead side, but he's got some stability in his upper body. His upper body is not lunging forward. I see so many men, and particularly with the driver, yes, the weight goes forward, but the upper lunges out in front, and now the head's too far ahead of it. The path gets too far to the left, steep. You know, we start hitting these pop-ups, and weak ones off to the right. If you're popping it up and you're getting that idiot mark on top of the driver head, you know, you're too steep. So we shift our weight and we stay behind. Look at the stability. Look at his head. His head's still kind of looking to the right. I love this image. This is great for so many. Weight shift, stability in the upper. His head's looking a little to the right. He's not lunging up at all. He's staying behind it. Look at that. His head still looking to the right. Club head swinging past. And he's in the rotation and all that's kind of chasing it out, but he's not lunging, you know, out ahead of it. And when you start doing that through the impact zone, then, you know, the release of the arms and hands and all of those things, they, they start to, they, they start to take flourishing right there. And you can start seeing how the club here back to Lucas and the club is 
rotated over 45 degrees and released back under the left shoulder. And the right shoulder notice is kind of tracing down and under. A lot of that through the differentiation of the upper and lower. His lower shifted, but his upper had some stability where he stayed behind it with that side bend. And then as he rotated through, that right shoulder continues to work underneath. That's a great look right there. I mean, this is this is a look when you when you get to this kind of you know training with people and and they start getting this sense of yeah man I can feel my weight left and my left hip is turning up and back but I'm still in my spine angle where my right shoulder still down under my left but the shaft fully released <laughs> I mean look like, this is this is this is clean clean stuff right here so not not a you know shock that he's an incredible ball striker. So great look as, as he starts to release through and there's no chicken wing. And I mean, I'll finish with this, you know, as you, as you kind of work through this program, it's, it's fascinating as you, as you start looking at, as you start looking at what's happening with the arms and hands through impact, the first thing when you show someone their swing, if they have a chicken wing, where the left elbow pulls away, that lead arm, that's the first thing they mention. It's like, they're, oh my God, I got a chicken wing still. Got to get rid of that. And you really can't get rid of that until you start kind of getting things more organized before it. And that chicken wing is, is a response to what's happening before it. There's no chicken wing here with Lucas because it's a response to what's happening before it. You know, he's he's kind of done things correctly through impact, and now his arms and hands want to fold and his his wrists want to rehinge. And you can reverse engineer that to some, you know, there's other there's other ways to go about this, but just keeping it clean through setup, backswing, downswing, through impact now, man, you the chicken wing kind of goes away, you know, as you as you kind of check the boxes leading up to it. So I, I I've had a lot of success with a lot of success with students amateurs saying hey let's let's set up this way let's let's get this down with the driver you know and there's joaquin again all right now let's let's kind of get a little sense of getting loaded belt buckle traces and we you know, we start turning properly the right hip up and back change of knee flex left shoulders behind the ball all right check as we're as we're doing that like we, we've got some integrity to how the club is moving right and and how the club is is out in front of you here and the left arm's working around club face is taken care of good grip good wrist angles and now we're yeah gosh we've really incentivized us now to kind of get, pitch the club back behind us there's a good weight shift into the lead foot yes i've shifted but i've got stability in my upper body so i can stay behind it at impact like sammy burns stay behind it through impact. Now my arms and hands releasing past me. It's just, you know, all these things just kind of slowly start to evolve. And I, and I think primarily that is the, the approach that I've taken for, for many, many years. And I, and I went through like this period as well. And I still do this to some degree where you can, you can kind of reverse engineer it too, where you, you work from impact and the release and, and kind of what's happening, impact and release. And then you, kind of work back from there and let things shape. And I think that has some value too. And I don't want to get into when I might go that way versus kind of checking the boxes this way, as I've described in this podcast, but there are different ways to kind of train this, but I, hopefully this total driving podcast gives you some oversight and some things to think about as you enter the fall to get more out of your driver, because look, if you can drive the ball, well, this game becomes easier not easy but it becomes easier when your driver is failing you my goodness is this sport tough <laughs> so some things to think about the complete program look there's more to it there's more detailed stuff out there is on my website travisholtongolf.com go check it out it's total driving you'll see the other training programs on there as well but it, it could be a good study for you as you get into the fall and even the winter to kind of attack your driver like hey, I need to drive the ball better. And here's the way that I'm going to do that, all right? So a few, few, um, few things for thought there uh, with the driver. 
Go check it out. Thank you for being here. We've got some good stuff coming here. September, October, top teachers uh, coming your way. We actually have, and I'll finish with this, um, a really cool in-studio series that we're going to be doing as well. And if we have some locals, I know um, Action News, uh, this is being uh, broadcasted uh, through their platform. But we do have a really cool in-studio series coming. Um, and I'm starting to sell tickets to it. In November, I have J.C. Deacon coming. Uh, J.C. is the head coach for the University of Florida Gators, national champs. He will be in studio uh, in November. Uh, December, I have Marcus Potters coming. He is one of the top putting coaches in the game. He will be in studio. In January, we have uh, Parker McLaughlin coming at the end of January. He will be coming in. He's one of the top short game coaches in the game. And then in March, around the players, we have Dana Dahlquist coming, who is one of the top full swing coaches in the game. So four terrific coaches starting in November, going through March. I'm selling tickets, sponsorship opportunities, and it's going to be a uh, it's going to be with a live audience in here. So we're only going to have about 25 to 30 people uh, per event, and um, it's going to be a great way to come in and, and spend some quality time with uh, one of the top coaches in the game, ask questions. And sharing some of the, again, specialization in the sport, but also some opportunities for companies, groups who want to uh, do some entertainment and maybe bring a customer or an employee. So uh, if you're interested, email me, Travis at TravisFultonGolf.com. Can't wait. Got more good stuff coming. Let's drive the ball better, though, in the meantime this fall. Thanks for being here.